Welcome to the National Organization of Nurse Practitioner Faculties podcast. Welcome to the second series of the NAF podcast created by the Simulation Committee of NAF. This year, our podcast series titled In the Trenches, Confessions and Pearls of NP Simulationists will center around the 2023 fall release of the NAF Guide to Nurse Practitioner Simulations, a step-by-step approach. This guide, an e-learning book, was created by the NAF Simulation Committee. The e-book is formatted to help NP faculty design effective, measurable simulations that address learner programmatic and national level competencies. Led by members of the current Simulation Committee, Podcast moderators invite authors of the ebook to share pearls of approaching simulation from the perspective of the nurse practitioner. Welcome, everyone. I'm Elaine Kalsinger. I'm a family nurse practitioner and assistant professor of clinical nursing at the Duke University School of Nursing. But here today, I'm going to be moderating our podcast. It's part of our series from our 2023 NAMF Guide to Developing Simulations, a step-by-step approach. And that's uh, available at our website as an ebook. And here today, we have some of our experts in pre-briefing, the authors of Chapter 6. And what I would like is if you uh, could kindly go ahead and uh, introduce yourselves as well as provide some background on your experience with pre-briefing in simulation. So perhaps, uh, Cindy, uh, if you'll go ahead. Well, thank you, Elaine. I'm Cindy Weston. I'm a dean and professor at the University of North Texas Health Science Center in Fort Worth, uh, where I've uh, joined to launch a new college of nursing. And I came recently, though, from Texas A&M University, where I launched a family nurse practitioner program uh, with a focus of rural and medically underserved and built that curriculum with simulation embedded. uh, So on the forefront of incorporating simulation and nurse practitioner education and um, have some publications about that and uh, and and was part of the inaugural group on our NOMP simulation committee. So um, these are my esteemed colleagues, and we had the privilege to contribute to this pre-briefing chapter in the ebook. Thank you so much. Lori? Lori Lyosi. I'm a clinical professor emeritus at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. I was their previous uh, executive director of the Learning and Technology uh, Simulation Center there um, and have um, a CHESI certification, a CHESI A and a CHESI SOS, um, as well as some history in doing some research in, in the standards and best practices in healthcare simulation. Thank you. Heidi. Yes, hi. I'm Heidi He. I'm a, a family nurse practitioner. I am the graduate program director here at uh, California State University, Bakersfield. And uh, I am uh, a part of the uh, non simulation committee. And uh, I have been um, chassis for almost uh, two years now. And uh, compared to my esteemed colleagues, I'm still new in this uh, simulation, but uh, I am just fortunately, I I have been fortunate to be able to be a part of this uh, pre-briefing work group. And we really had fun uh, writing the chapter. Thank you. Thank you so very much for uh, that introduction. I'd like to move into our first question now. Um, if you may, can you describe some of the key components of a successful pre-briefing session in simulation? I'll, I'll start that, you know, um, pre-briefing paves the way for successful learning. And we want our students, our learners, to be successful in simulation. And it starts with really setting the stage for the simulation with some clear expectations. Uh, and one of the most important things is creating a psychologically safe environment, lowering their anxiety so that they know what to expect in the environment of the simulation, knowing if 
um, just even the details of what is the room going to look like when they get inside and what are the elements in the room that they need to know about uh, what type of prep time, how long the simulation is going to last and how will they be debriefed after the simulation. Those are some of the key elements to uh, a successful pre-brief. Yeah, and in the chapter, we actually go through several of, of the actual um, components, the, the pre-briefing elements, if you will. Um, setting the scene, as, as, as Cindy uh, talked about, the expectations. Um, we go through debriefing, uh, simulation scenario, the simulation orientation, uh, as well as uh, preparation time uh, for the students, and even discuss what we're doing in evaluation. Mm -hmm. So as a relatively uh, new simula simulationist, and uh, I do notice that faculty often overlook this uh, important element of the simulation, you know, and pre-briefing actually is clearly is essential and actually is the critical um, element to a successful simulation. Now, you mentioned, um, you know, psychologically safe learning envi environment. Um, as a major concern, but what are some of the other challenges that you can uh, provide some information with uh, nurse practitioners, for instance, um, facing when conducting pre-briefing sessions, and, and how can they be overcome? So challenges that MP educators face, I mean, we, we've had a lot <laughs> that we've overcome, and, and actually by working together, I think it's been the key factor in it. But simulation curriculum development, um, replacing uh, lecture time with actual simulations experience for formative learning um, is one of the greatest things I think we can do. Um, transitioning from classroom teaching for the facilitator to actually discovery learning um, is, is a hard flip uh, sometimes when you're busy, busy trying to get a bunch of content in, but going to discovery learning where you slow down and allow the students to uh, actually walk through and learn, uh, find out what they know and don't know. Uh, planning time has been a barrier as well. Um, but that can also be overcome. Uh, we, we've learned to focus a little more on the pre-briefing now to set the students up for success. Um, and then really going through a dry run of that pre-briefing as well as the scenario and debriefing is, is a vital key. So a lot of it has to do with time, but um, as, as the administrators um, have shown more and more support to allow the time for effective learning in those situations. I'll echo what Lori just said on uh, timing and intentionality and just uh, remembering to do it and being very intentional about including essential elements. And one of the things I love about the chapter is it was specifically designed with charts and tables and examples. So it it's user friendly for nurse practitioner faculty to follow along on what, how should I do this? How can I overcome some of the challenges? One of the challenges is not divulging too much of the simulation or giving too many clues in the simulation. So there's a sweet spot in preparing the learner and setting them up for success, but not overindulging in uh, what that simulation is going to be about. So I was going to um, echo what Cindy said that, uh, you know, in our chapter, we did talk about the common pitfalls um, and, uh, and what we can do uh, to uh, prevent those uh, mistakes. And uh, um, that uh, I think is very user friendly. And uh, myself, I felt um, one of the common pit, uh, common pitfalls is uh, faculty um, lack of preparedness, you know, and uh, clearly uh, pre-briefing sometimes overlooked, and that's why it's not well prepared. But um, I do think a pre-briefing checklist, something like that, would be very helpful. So the process is standardized, and uh, then uh, we don't miss things that, uh, you know, otherwise we might miss things. Great information. And um, can you perhaps share some information about how uh, pre-briefing can be used to help students develop, say, their critical thinking skills and uh, clinical judgment skills? Um, yeah, so I'm sorry. Thank you, Elaine, um, for the question. I think uh, pre-briefing can really be used to help simulate critical thinking and clinical judgment um, by scaffolding the simulations. Um, so you can, you know, uh, the level of the learner and, and, and making the objectives harder and harder. But um, also your pre-briefings get smaller and smaller as after many simulations, the smaller, you know, your pre-briefings can go to 
doorway um, pre-briefings <laughs> versus long pre-briefings in the in the room during formative simulations. So as you move or to high stakes testing, you know, pre-briefings do that and that can really test clinical judgment differently. Um, uh, video, we talk about different ways to um, uh, execute the pre-briefing, whether it's video recordings or recordings of the, the faculty member giving it so it's standardized. But there's so many options uh, in, in our chapter. I would, I would I would tell you to go read it, but you can also get really creative um, and still standardize the information. I, I think clinical judgment too occurs in the development of that critical thinking in that psychologically safe environment. And pre-briefing helps alleviate some of that anxiety that's up here before they go into a, a simulation, the fear of the unknown. If we can give them some perspective of what to expect, it brings that anxiety level down to where really learning is enhanced, not hindered, um, and letting them know this is a safe place to make mistakes. You, you, no one's going to die today in our simulation. We're, we're going to run through a scenario and, uh, and you're going to learn from it. And this is a safe place in which to learn. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And also, uh, you know, a simulation scenario is one of the element, critical element in the pre-briefing. So providing that background, that history of the scenario and providing the objective of the simulation and also uh, share the uh, evaluation method with the students are all those is going to prepare the students for success. Great. So one of the tips for pre-briefing is that failure is an option. Uh, so to make mention of that uh, to the students. And uh, finally, can you share your expertise with regards to how nurse practitioner educators can evaluate the effectiveness of their pre-briefing sessions? Yeah, uh, we often feel intimidated by other faculty members being in our simulations, but I think it's one of the key ways to do it. Uh, I love to record it uh, and watch it myself when I'm doing one. That's how I love to evaluate myself um, or have somebody else watch it and give you some feedback. But using uh, the pre-briefing checklist um, for the elements for success that we know are there are, is super important. And there's some facilitator guides and tools that you can use to see how did you do as a facilitator of that pre-brief um, that are that are um, evidence-based and in the literature. And we include that. We we talk about that in our, our chapter. Those are those are elements to kind of hone your own skills as um, a simulationist and particularly in pre-briefing. And then, of course, you know, evaluation is always 360, right? So you have the students, you have the peer and the self. So uh, a student clearly uh, can offer feedback as well. But um, I do think that ourselves is always the hardest uh, critics and uh, <laughs> our, our, ourselves. And oh. then, then peer um, uh, evaluation most definitely. Is. However, it's intimidating, but it's always helpful. Self-reflection. And, and Heidi, as you said, I mean, how did the simulation go? And, and a lot of times it'll be the student at the end. You realize everybody's missing this one thing. Well, we didn't prepare them for that one thing. And, and so that self-reflection on you as the educator to how do I do this different to make sure they, they had what they needed to go in and be successful. Yeah, and I would also recommend asking the staff. The staff have great input. So we talk mm -hmm. about the student, uh, we talk about self-evaluation, we talk about formal evaluation with the peer, we talk about video evaluation, student evaluation, self-evaluation, but staff is, they're watching everything and they don't have a chance to give you that. But even after your dry run, the staff may have some great ideas uh, as well, how to enhance your simulation based on things they have in the lab, uh, you know, or in the simulation area. Well, thank you so very much to uh, our guests at this podcast. It was uh, exceptional information. Uh, and um, I would ask that our audience continue their interest in uh, simulation and uh, join us in our future podcasts. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today to hear from our NAF simulation experts. This podcast has been written, directed, and produced by David House, Jenny O'Rourke, Elaine Kalsinger, Tedra Smith, Jeannie Rodriguez, Leanne Barfield, and Queen Henry Okafor. 
Special thanks to Knopf CEO, Mary Beth Bigley. The digital ebook is available for purchase on the Knopf website to both members and non-members. The opinions expressed in this podcast series or any product mentioned are not specifically endorsed by Knopf.